Hello everyone, my name is Emma Clements. I am the current project assistant for the Amphibian Migrations and Road Crossings Project. Welcome to the Amphibian Identification Module. In this module, I will be going over how to identify the species of amphibians you might see on a migration night. Before I begin, listed here are the species that are most commonly encountered during a migration night. However, over the past 11 years of this project, our volunteers have seen a combined 20 species. If you are new to the project or new to identifying amphibians, I would recommend learning these eight species first, then moving on to the other species. Remember, we are not asking you to identify the cause of these amphibians or if it's a male or female, only the species and the amount you see. On every slide, you will see a small map that has colored squares. These maps are part of the Amphibian and Reptile Atlas project, which was a 10-year survey from 1990 to 1999, with some additional reports collected up to 2007. They aim to show the geographic distributions of these amphibians in New York State. Remember that the Herp Atlas maps might show that they are present in the area, but they could be hunkered down during these early spring migrations of other amphibians. If you would like to find out more about this project, you can click the link or copy and paste it into your browser. All right, I think we are ready to get started. We will be identifying salamanders first, then moving on to frogs and toads. These next four salamanders I will be going over are all species of the mole salamander family. They live in the forest and spend much of their time underground, hence the name mole salamanders. It's important to note that these first four salamanders depend on woodland pools for breeding purposes. I'll be mentioning the amphibians that breed and rely on woodland pools as we go through this module. The spotted salamander is easy to identify for obvious reasons. This salamander has bright yellow spots on its back with a dark gray body. As we continue through the salamander slides, you will notice the size of the spotted salamander is quite large. The salamanders that are part of the mole salamander family are quite robust and have thicker limbs and tails than the other salamanders. Look at the map and you will see that the spotted salamander is widespread throughout New York and is frequently seen by our volunteers. These two mole salamanders, the Jefferson and the Blue Spotted, commonly hybridize. This hybridization has created variable appearances, so individuals may have characteristics of both species. We would need genetic testing to tell Jeffersons apart from Blue Spotted, apart from complex. Even experts in the field have a hard time identifying the two species, so for that reason, we consider any sightings to be the Jefferson blue spotted salamander complex. As you can see on the slide, the Jefferson salamander has more of a brown body coloration, can also be a gray coloration, and will have blue or pale blue to white flecked undersides. The blue spotted salamander has a darker brown to dark gray body coloration with blue silver flecks. Their coloring resembles that of enamel or pots. Remember, both of these species depend on woodland pools. <clears throat> Here are a couple of other photos taken by our volunteers in 2019 during the migration. The individual on the left looks more like a hybrid, whereas the individual on the right looks more like a blue spotted. But remember, we would consider these both Jefferson blue spotted salamander complex. Looking at their range, you can see it's limited. And Albany County is this species most northern part of their range in the counties that we focus on. The marbled salamander has unique coloration and markings, making it easy to identify. This is one of the species where you would identify, or you could identify, a male from a female due to the color of the crossbars running down the length of the body. The females tend to have a gray silvery crossband, while the males tend to have white crossbands. These salamanders are stouter than the others, and their total length reaches about five inches. You will most likely not come across this salamander during the spring migration because they have a unique cycle. Instead of breeding in the spring, like most other amphibians, marble salamanders migrate to woodland pools during the fall. Looking at the map, you will see that this species has a limited range. As we move forward with the other salamander species, please note that they do not require a vernal woodland pool for breeding success. The four-toed salamander reaches a maximum length of only 3.5 inches, unlike the mole salamanders where the spotted can reach up to 10 inches. They are small, reddish-brown in coloration and have dark spots on their belly. Four toads can sometimes be confused with the more commonly seen redback salamanders, but I will go over some ways to make sure you can confidently identify a four toad versus a redback. Redback salamanders 
are slender and can reach up to 4.5 inches. The photo on the right may look like two different salamanders, but they just have two main color phases, which are the redback and lidback phase. A cool fact about these salamanders is by mass, they're the most abundant salamanders in New York. You may have seen one in your garden before and mistaken it as a worm. You can see on the map that they are widespread, but are only sometimes seen by volunteers during migration night. Here are some key physical characteristics that will help you differentiate the four toes from the redback salamanders. First, there are obvious differences in the stomach. You will see the four toed has more defined spots while the redback has a speckling or salt and pepper belly. Second, there's an obvious constriction at the base of the tail on the four toed, seen very well in the top right photo. Third, the snout shape of a four toed is blunt, almost square, while the snout shape of the redback is more of an oval or rounded shape. And lastly, and maybe the hardest to see, is the four-toed salamander has, you guessed it, four toes on its hind limbs. The redback and most other salamanders have five toes. And of course, if you have any doubts about the identification, make sure you take photos so you can upload them with your survey submission or send them to us via email. This goes for any amphibians that you have doubts in identifying correctly. We will gladly help. The last of the salamander species that I will be going over in this module is the red spotted newt. This species has a much more complex life cycle. They have a terrestrial juvenile stage and an aquatic adult stage. Their first metamorphosis is a terrestrial red F stage. This can last two to three years, although it may extend up to seven years. Their second metamorphosis is an adult fully aquatic stage. Though in some adult populations in New York and elsewhere, they may spend time on land each year. And there have even been documented cases of some skipping the terrestrial stage completely. In their terrestrial stage, they will be bright orange in coloration with rough skin and two rows of orange spots outlined with a dark black circle running down their backs. In their adult stage, they have olive green bodies with a spotted pale yellow belly, wet feet, and keel tails for swimming purposes. You may see a transitional stage as seen in the middle picture on the right. This individual has characteristics of the juvenile stage and the adult um, aquatic stage. All right, time for a mini quiz to see if you can apply the knowledge you just learned. Question number one, what are two physical traits to distinguish a four-toed from a redback salamander? So you can pause the module before clicking to the next slide because that's where the answer is going to be. If you have any two of the four distinguishing characteristics in this list, you are correct. Well done. Time for question two. Which one is a spotted salamander? If you chose the salamander on the left, you are correct. Look at those bright yellow spots. And lastly, question number three, what species is this? If you thought it was a northern redback salamander, you are correct. There is no constriction at the base of the tail. If you were to see this during a migration night, the best indicator is the spotted belly versus the speckled with the redback having speckling or a salt and pepper belly. Well done. We will now move on to frogs and toads. I will be starting with the wood frog because this species relies on woodland pools for breeding purposes and it is the most commonly seen frog during the migration. This species can be anywhere from 1.5 to 3 inches in length, making them quite small. Their coloration can vary from shades of pink to shades of brown. The important indicators of a wood frog are, number one, they're raccoon masks that run across their eyes that might not always be as apparent as the ones in the photos, but they will be there. And number two is a bright white upper lip. Wood frogs also have distinct ridges or dorsolateral ridges along both sides of their back. Next is the peeper. And I wanna point out that there will be no other frog or toad species in this module that rely on woodland pools for breeding purposes. These frogs may look big on the slides, but the Northern string peeper is one of the smallest frogs in New York reaching up to a maximum of 1.5 inches in size. As you can see by the map, this species has a widespread range and is frequently seen during migration nights. The skin is smooth and usually light brown, but can be gray or olive in color. The biggest giveaway for the spring peeper is the shape on its back, which as you can see in the photos looks like an X. Spring peeper is a tree frog, so they will also have small toe pads. This species is also a tree frog and can often get confused with the spring peeper. Note that the gray tree frog is not often seen during migration nights. 
This species reaches a larger total size than the peeper, can be up to two inches, and has rougher skin. Their coloration varies in response to environmental stimuli. They can sometimes change their color to match their background. The gray tree frog has dark splotches on its back, unlike peepers, which have that X shape. The gray tree frog will also have bright yellow inner thighs and larger toe pads in the peeper. There are two toes that could be seen during a migration night. The first one I will talk about, and the one that our volunteers would most likely come across during a migration night, is the Eastern American toad. This species is quite sturdy and will have variable coloration. The American toad can be confused with the Fowler's toad, shown on the next slide, but there are some key characteristics I will go over with you to help you successfully identify them. The easiest physical characteristic that identifies an American toad is the black modeling or speckles on the belly, seen in the photo on the left. The Fowler's toad has a white belly without the black modeling. The American toad also has one to two warts per dark spot on its back, whereas the Fowler's has three to seven. And this is the Fowler's toad. First, notice the geographic range. These toads prefer a drier habitat than the American toad. Like I mentioned in the last slide, these toads have three to seven warts per dark spot on their back and have no black modeling on their belly. Now we're going to take a closer look at some of the differences between the two toads. If you look at the head of each toad, there is a difference when it comes to their post-orbital ridge, which is just a bony part behind their eye socket, so please refer to B in the pictures, and whether it touches their glands, refer to C in the pictures. Looking at the American toad first, you can see that there is a separation between B, the post-orbital ridge, and C, the parotoid glands. If you refer to D in the picture, you can really see the separation. Sometimes a bony spur may connect the gland to the post-orbital ridge for the American toad. If you look at the Fowler's toad, their glands are pushed right up against their post-orbital ridge. This picture also shows the number of warts per dark spot on their backs very well, and note the modeling on the stomach. We are not asking you to memorize any of these scientific terms, and remember, when in doubt, take a photo. The next four frogs that I will be talking about in this module are rarely seen by our volunteers during migration nights. But as you can see in the map for the green frog, their geographic distribution is quite widespread. The green frog is not always green, as its name might suggest, but can vary from green to bronze with dark modeling, as seen in the photo on the left. The green frog can often get confused with the bullfrog, but look at the ridges running down the back. We will see coming up that the bullfrog does not have these ridges. I would first like to point out the picture in the top left corner. The species down the top is the green frog, as you can see, while the species on the bottom is the bullfrog. Bullfrogs can get very large in size. The total length of a green frog can reach up to 3.5 inches, while the bullfrog can reach up to six. However, you shouldn't go off size alone. The coloration can be that, can be like that of a green frog, but let's look at the ridges. If you're wondering, wait, they don't have any, you're correct. They have a skin fold, which does not extend down its back, but instead just wraps around and down the tympanum, or the eardrum. These are the last two frog species that I will be talking about in this module. Both are rarely seen by our volunteers. At a glance, these frogs look similar, but let's look at some key differences. The leopard frog can have more vibrant shades of green coloration, while the pickerel frog will never have green coloration. The lipid frog has rows of roundish spots with light green borders, whereas the pickerel frog will have more rectangular shapes on its back. The pickerel frog has bright yellow inner thighs, while the lipid frog does not. This is a big giveaway if you want to identify a lipid from a pickerel frog. Time for another mini quiz. Number one, what species is this? And remember to pause the module before progressing to the next slide, which has the answer. If you guess Northern Spring Peeper, you are correct. Look at that X shape on the back. Question number two. What is one physical characteristic that can differentiate an American toad from a Fowler's? And just so you know, both pictures on this slide are American toads. If you named any one of the three physical characteristics listed, you are correct. And the last question, can you name this species? This is a wood frog. That raccoon mask isn't as dark as the ones in the photos we saw earlier, but check out that bright white upper lip and the dorsal lateral ridges running down the back. Well done. You have now completed this module on amphibian species identification. 
I hope you feel more confident in your identifying skills. Remember, when in doubt, take photos and we will gladly help. Thank you for listening.